This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the XP Pen Artist 22E Pro. The 22E Pro is the one with the E stands for Express Keys on the side, 16 programmable keys. The 22 Pro without the E is the same thing, only no Express Keys. It's a full HD 1920 by 1080 IPS pen monitor, which means it works with this pen right here. So it's good for you art types, particularly sort of for photo editors. We'll get into that, and it doesn't have touch. We're going to look at it now. Now, those of you who aren't artists or even photo retouchers would probably laugh about why is this thing so huge? If you are an artist, you know why, or even a photo editor, certainly, because bigger is better. You like to see up close without having to do a lots of zooming on a tiny display. However, when you talk about Wacom, who is the king of the game when it comes to these products, their stuff is very expensive. If you want to get the last generation, though still not discontinued, Wacom Cintiq 22 HD, that one is kind of old technology, and it's still $1,700. This price is 1699 Now, Wacom's version has a better quality display in terms of the overall color calibration and all that sort of thing, but it only supports 2,048 pressure levels, where this one is newer technology. It's 8,192 levels of pressure. The Wacom's have tilt, though, and rotation support. This one does not have tilt support, just lots of pressure levels. Neither of them is a touch screen, which is probably okay. It is nice to be able to pinch and zoom. The good part is, is though they include the lovely artist glove like everybody else, it's mostly so you don't smear on the screen. You don't have to worry about accidentally touching the screen and having your canvas move while you're drawing or painting. So this one lists for $5.99, and you can get it from XP Pen's website. They're originally a Japanese company. Now they're kind of all over the world. Anyway, they sell to most anywhere in the world without shipping charges, which is kind of cool. But if you're in the United States, you can get it for $4.99 on Amazon, which obviously is a better deal. So that's wildly affordable, isn't it? This is why you would consider this over the last generation, kind of getting old tech Wacom Cintiq 22 HD. And of course, Wacom has even better products now. The, the newly released, though still hard to find, 24 Cintiq Pro, well, that is stunning. And that one is $2,000 without touch. So this is for people who really want to get into art and the big screen experience, because once you start working professionally, you're going to have to learn how to draw big and work on a big screen. This is how you do it without breaking the bank. Now, when it comes to there's three big players in the kind of Wacom clone, the import, more affordable ones. There's XP Pen, and there's Hueon, and there's Yuji. And I've reviewed all three of those. In fact, I've reviewed XP Pen before. They have the 16 Artist Pro, which is a higher gamut but smaller display product. And they have a lot of similarities. The built-in stand and the way it works is very similar. The way they implement the express key is fairly similar, although, like I said, Hueon adds the scroll feature, the scroll zoom kind of feature going on inside. UG is the least polished so far. Their driver is the least good, so I'm the least excited by them. Their packaging doesn't even look very commercial. It's your basic brown paper bag kind of boxing, whereas this comes in a very pretty box. So does the Hueon. But they're all built pretty well and pretty sturdy. If you look at this, you don't say, oh my god, this is a cheap piece of junk at all. It really is well put together. It might not have the kind of designer look the way the latest Wacom's do, but I have no issues with the build quality whatsoever on this. So display quality, that's where this is a little bit of a mixed bag, and it also depends on whether you remove the factory installed matte screen protector. I, with the matte screen protector off, boy, does it look pretty nice. It's good. Uh, in terms of display metrics, yes, it does have good Adobe and sRGB color gamut. Given this price range, you cover just about full sRGB. But the white point is pretty off, even when you're using the monitor setting to specify, say, 6500 Kelvin, which is the standard where graphic artists would want to have it set. It actually measures 79 to 7800 Kelvin, which is kind of not great. For gamma, it simply has on and off. Gamma is a numerical value. 2.2, for example, is ideal. It could be 2.1, it could be 2.3, but they just have on and off. So the gamma on this is a little low at the factory. It calibrates up nicely, though. Now, it's, they call this an IPS display. Technically, it's a VA display, which is sort of like an IPS technology, but the lateral viewing angles aren't great. You'll see brightness and color shift side to side off angle. I don't think it matters much. The same is true of the Hueon, because you're going to sit in front of this when you're doing artwork anyway. You're not going to be stand, sitting at extreme sides. But if you want to use this as your desktop monitor, it's something that you should be aware of. 
compared to the Wacom Cintiq 22 HD, which is in itself older technology. That one has better viewing angles and a bit better when it comes to things like white point and gamma, that sort of thing. When you look at the new Cintiq Pro, like the Cintiq Pro 24, wow, that's 4K and that has really wide Adobe RGB coverage, a lot better, but that one's $2,000, so let's be fair here. Let's talk about that matte screen protector, and I'm going to peel that off so you can see the difference. It looks very grainy and the colors are very muted, nothing pops. Oh, that looks really nice, actually. And it's not super glossy, even without this, I have to say. Now, normally I would hate a, a glossy screen, but given the fact that the visual contrast looks better here, I might go with this. Now, the only drawback is the fact that the pen nibs with this, and just like their compatriots, Huey on and Yuji, the pen nibs are very hard on this. So what happens is the pen will skate on the glass a lot more. The screen protector does provide tooth, so you're giving that up. I think that's more important, perhaps, than any potential glare, since it's not that glary a display. Now, this is a full HD, like I said, 21.5 inch display, 1920 by 1080, but don't be confused by their website because they talk about now we have 4K driver support, and some people think that means it's a 4K display. Oh my God, if it was 4K at this price, I would say run out and buy it right now. It's not. What they really mean is that, again, all three players, Huey on, UG, and XP Pen, had problems if your laptop had a laptop under Windows not Mac, Mac was always fine, had a higher resolution display. So last time around when I did the XP Pen 16 Artist, it was a problem because I was using the HP Spectre X360 15 inch, which has a 4K panel. And the driver, the pen would not at all map correctly on this display. So I would have to set the Spectre X360 to run at 1920 by 1080 and just use it in display mirroring mode. Now I can set it in extended display mode. You can see I have it set up working with the Dell as well with this Mac and that part works. So that's what they mean by that. And that's a good thing because today a lot of laptops that you folks might be buying will be higher than full HD resolution. And now you can use them as two independent displays here, the built-in one on your laptop and this one here. So the stand on this, much like all of these, other than Wacom, who doesn't give you a stand at all, hello Wacom, is really big, really sturdy. It has rubber here, rubber feet up at the front, and there's this little lift lever. So you can go all the way with a little squeak <laughs> and it goes all the way upright and you can drop it wherever you release it it stays and it's you know it's sturdy it's good stuff so you can go all the way down to that flat if you like even better the cables are mounted on the side so we've seen some of these where they actually had the cable mounts unfortunately at the bottom so they would get all caught up in this mechanism so all of our cable connectors are over here. You've got your VGA, you have your HDMI, of course, the power and the USB. And again, like all of these affordable pen monitors, you get a box full of stuff. So in the box, you get the HDMI cable, you get the USB cable. You also get a VGA cable in the box, a little adapter, probably for Mac people mostly. It's DisplayPort slash Thunderbolt 2 to HDMI in case you don't have an HDMI port on your machine. And of course you get, this is the power brick with plenty of cord, so you can plug the thing in. This is what the little USB charging cord looks like for the pen, USB at this end. You can plug this into a cell phone charger or into your laptop to charge it up. And then this goes right into the hole over here for our nice torpedo shaped pen, which is pretty ergonomic and comfortable with the two buttons on it. And you get two pens in the box as well. This is starting to feel like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. There's this, this stand right here, right? Which is nice. So what it is, is actually comes like so. So it's your pen holder in case you want to carry it around like a big cigar. And if you unscrew this end, here's your extra nibs. You get eight spare nibs in there and there's a nib puller, puller under there as well. So that's pretty clever. And then there's a little felt baggie if you want to put your into a bag. And of course, all of these brands all come with their own same little two finger glove here that you can wear so you don't smear on the screen and they put their logo on it, which if you're right handed will be face up. If you're left handed like me will be face down. But this is good because I don't have to wear my poverty gloves anymore as you always see me wearing gloves where I've just cut the fingers off when I'm drawing. So just like all, <laughs> again, all, all three of these competitors are all using the same UC Logic sort of digitizer, which is an EMR technology, not like what Wacom uses, but where the trace amount of active power is actually in the pen. So this is rechargeable and they all actually come with the same USB little charging 
cable that you plug into this. You don't have to leave it plugged in when you're using the pen. You just charge it up every so often. I find about a month or so if you use it, say, 20 hours a week or something like that. So this is pretty good in terms of pressure curves. It's very sensitive to a light touch, and I do have a light touch. You can adjust the pressure curves, you can see. The software allows you to do that, so that's no problem. There is no tilt here, there is no rotation support here for the price that is fair. If you do need those things, obviously this wouldn't be the product for you at all. So typical of these UC Logic digitizers, there is pretty much no diagonal line jitter. When doing a s slow diagonal line, it's good stuff here. You don't have to worry about that. For those of you who follow such things, it supports 266 reports per second and 5080 lines per inch of pen resolution. So that's pretty good. In terms of the actual pen experience, it is excellent. It is very enjoyable. There is, however, some parallax because there is an air gap between the digitizer and the top glass. I found that with the Mac, boy, just out of the box, I didn't even have to calibrate it. The tip of my pen is exactly where I was drawing where I expected it to be. When I was using it with the XPS 13 9360, I noticed that the calibration was off. And the, the calibration in their own software really is a five-point calibration. It didn't make a difference at all. So I used the, the built-in Windows 10 calibration for under tablet settings, and that got it closer, but still not exactly right. And that parallax was noticeable. I despise parallax. A lot of you don't care so much about it. If you got a Wacom Cintiq 22 HD, you're dealing with parallax already, though, unlike modern pen-friendly laptops and convertibles with a pen like a Microsoft Surface Pro or something like that. So under the Mac, all the programs that I tested work just fine, including the Adobe CC Suite, using Adobe Photoshop, for example. Clip Studio Paint works fine. Uh, this does not support WinTab. So under Windows, you have an option to enable Windows Ink. That's what you're going to want to do. So if you're using any really older programs that don't have Windows Ink support, you're going to be out of luck. But pretty much everything does these days, including Clip Studio Paint. And the Clip Studio Paint footage that you see on screen was done under Windows. Now, besides the fact that you can now have a 4K laptop and not run into problems, how are the drivers on this? Generally speaking, they do a lot better with Mac than they do with Windows, but this went pretty well. The only thing that was boggling was the installation, because usually, you know how it is with most products, you're supposed to install the drivers before you plug in the product. With this one, I tried on three different laptops under Windows land, and that didn't work at all. And what I discovered is you have to install the drivers first, which you're going to download from their website. They update them pretty frequently. That's always a good thing. You're going to plug in this device, the USB and the display cable first, and then install the drivers, and then it's all great. If you're trying to decide between this and the Huion Canvas GT221 that you can see here, well, the Huion is about $300 more, and I probably would choose the Artist 22E Pro. The pen experience is the same. The Artist has a bit smaller footprint, which is nice. Now, the real difference here is you can remove the matte screen protector on the Artist, so you have a much nicer looking monitor. But the downside is if you prefer that matte texture, mostly you know, for drawing on, it, it adds tooth, then they, the Huion has, does something more expensive. They actually have treated the surface of the glass. You can't remove it, so if you don't like the muting of the colors and the graininess that that introduces, well, that's not so great. But it does look better than just the screen protector that's applied on the artist. So who's this for? Would I recommend it? Obviously, this is for the budding artist who doesn't have the budget of a commercial artist working for a larger company, where the larger company buys you your stuff. Would I buy this because I couldn't afford a Wacom Cintiq? If I could afford a Wacom Cintiq, sure, I would buy it. But most of us can't afford $2,000 and up for a display or even $1,700 for their last-gen technology. So honestly, yes, I would buy it. It's pretty darn good in terms of the actual pen experience. I might not be totally in love with the display quality, but it's a great way to get started, particularly for art. Photo editing, the display quality, if you take off that screen protector, gets a lot closer. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.